The 1960s were a time of freedom, and for many, a welcome departure from the stiffness and stuffiness of prior years. Throughout the 1950s, women's clothing represented a prevailing sense of propriety, of modest girlishness and layers, and layers of femininity in the most classic sense. Pastels and pearls and petticoats. But in fashion, as in music, literature, and film, the 1960s sought to turn the notion of traditional femininity on its head. Following Taylor Dougie Milling's statement-making debut of the Beatles' colorless suits, London-based fashion designer Mary Quant began making drastic cuts of her own. In the 1960s, the voluminous, flouncing, tea-length skirts of the previous decade began to grow shorter and shorter and shorter. Quant says, the early 60s were a frenzied tornado of energy, and the overriding mood was one of fun and excitement. Sexual freedom had arrived with the pill, given women choice that they have never had before. Everyone loved the mini. It made people feel happy. It was a big breakthrough. Clothing colors became louder, and the shapes more streamlined. In the United Kingdom, this took the form of the modernist, or mod, movement. Embodied by models such as Twiggy, the mod look was sleeker than anything women have done before. The straight lines of shift dresses, knee-high socks, patent boots, and graphic fabric patterns replaced the tea-time florals and hourglass shapes of their predecessors. By the end of the 1960s, a London clothing store called Biba became the go-to shop for fashion icons, including Beatles' girlfriends such as Jane Asher. Long lines of eager shoppers frequently trailed outside of the store. Designer and Biba owner Barbara Halenicki was inspired by the softer shapes of Victorian-era dresses. As the decade progressed, fashion took on a more romantic appeal, an aesthetic that also carried over across the pond. The Beatles' travels around the world were incorporated not only into their music, but also into their fashion. Following the famous trips to India, they more frequently traded their tailored matching suits for brocade coats and embellished tunics. And by the time they entered the Sgt. Pepper era, well... In the United States, many of the same rules applied to women's fashion, but they were also heavily influenced by the rock and roll icons of American musical festivals, such as Monterey Pop in San Francisco and a little gathering at a small dairy farm in New York in 1969. Jimi Hendrix and everything from velvet bell bottoms to long colorful embroidered coats and elaborate hats embodied the diversity and the richness of the era's fashion for both men and women. The question was no longer, how can we simplify the shape? It was, what else can we add besides feathers and fringe? At the time, vintage shops in San Francisco were all the rage, selling richly colored silk scarves and voluminous blouses with fabrics and designs from all eras and cultures. The look was one of effortless luxury, of freedom as well as indulgence. The famous Haight-Ashbury district was not only home to bands such as Jefferson Airplane and the Grateful Dead, but also a go-to source for the fashion that defined the decade. It became known as the birthplace of hippie culture. Grace Slick of Jefferson Airplane in many ways embodied this shift. The socialite daughter of an investment banker, she built a career as a department store model before tumbling into rock and roll. As White Rabbit blared through the airwaves in 1967, Grace's look inspired Sandra Dee's everywhere to embrace the look of bared midriffs and micro miniskirts, as well as the lifestyle of LSD and free love that often accompanied them. Even those that would go on to become bigger rockers of the era were influenced by the music industry's new look. Janis Joplin actually made her debut at Monterey Pop in 1967, wearing something resembling a pantsuit sweater? Her music caught the attention of thousands at the festival, but her look stuck out like a sore thumb. Like so many of those in attendance at Monterey, Joplin seemed inspired by the festival's fashion and emerged weeks later in the bead-draped, fringed looks she became known for. From the miniskirts to the festival vibe, the fashion of the 1960s remains a strong influence in today's fashion. And even beyond the aesthetic appeal of these designs, I think it can be really attributed to a mindset that everyone can still get behind, that clothes should be a reflection of and an outlet for happiness, expression, and above all, freedom. Here are some quotes from fashion icons from that period. Michelle Phillips, the rich hippie look really went into full bloom. Mia Farrow and I went together to a store in Beverly Hills. Profils du Monde. 
Tony, the owner of this store, bought these beautiful saris from India and Pakistan and Damascus brocades and made us flowing custom gowns and harem pants and robes. We dress like fantasy creatures from faraway cultures. Betsy Johnson, designer at the New York boutique Paraphernalia, says, I was making longer romantic clothes too, clothes with flowy sleeves, not just minis for Nico and Edie Sedwick. Elvira Madigan had just come out, such a romantic movie. I had loved that look since visiting the boutique Biba in London, standing in line to get into the wildly popular store. The Mary Quant look was over. The cool people loved Biba. Biba owner and designer Barbara Halonicki says, My romantic clothes were historical, Victorian, mid, late 19th century. Some of the California girls were much more romantic than even we were, their softer hippie look. We influenced each other. Julie Christie wore my Biba clothes, and the movie she made that year, far from the Madden crowd, was so influential. Even more so was Bonnie and Clyde, which featured Faye Dunaway in those Depression-era Dust Bowl dresses. When we saw Faye in the movie, boom, the skirt length dropped. The Beatles and Rolling Stones girlfriends wore my dresses. Jane Asher, Anita Pallenberg, and Marianne Faithful. Queen of miniskirts, Ali McGraw, says she found a sweetness in these new styles and reminisced in an interview with Vanity Fair about the hopeful, naive, idealistic freedom in them, and by extension, in those who wore them. Nancy Sinatra famously said, These were outfits women could move in, and they were a new kind of femininity found in the simplicity of shift dresses and the richness of brightly colored and patterned fabrics. Well, that's all for today, everyone. We hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.